Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. So I did a video a couple of days ago checking out a software called Speedify, a really, really interesting product, just about the only software I've come across, uh, promising to do connection bonding. Now, bonding is something very tricky to do on a hardware level. We've, we've heard a lot about SD-WANs recently, and bonding or this idea of being able to use different sources of connectivity to get yourself one really reliable and faster connection. So if you take a cellular connection plus an ISP connection or an ISP connection plus satellite connectivity, two satellites, two cellular connections uh, with different providers, that would really be the key thing. There wouldn't be any point in using two interfaces to pull from the same provider. But the idea of bonding is great. Uh, very hard to do using hardware if you're not in an enterprise type environment, as I've learned. Uh, but on the consumer level, they've made this nice little tool. Now, I did not find that I got a speed bump, uh, which is what I was interested in potentially using it for. I uh, ran a hotspot from my phone, used my ethernet connectivity from my ISP, put those together, and I didn't see an improvement on my baseline. Now, I repeated the test using USB tethering just to make sure that um, the computer was getting the best possible connection from cellular and again I didn't really see that speed boost but it doesn't mean that Speedify, it keeps, I keep almost saying Spotify, it doesn't mean that Speedify mightn't be useful. One use I could make of it, now what I've done is implemented this on the network level but if I hadn't put together all this different hardware and I was happy to pay uh, Speedify's monthly subscription is I could have just used this for failover. So I could have uh, you know, got a little uh, cellular hotspot, a data sim, kept that running here somewhere in my office and just use Speedify to try do failover on the network level or on the device level on my computer. Now the disadvantage would be other people on the network wouldn't benefit uh, from that failover. You can run Speedify on a, a Linux server. Uh, I've, some people have put it on Raspberry Pis, but you still need to pay that uh, subscription. Um, so I thought I'd just do a quick test of how well the failover works. Now I've done failover testing on my hardware uh, failover setup here, which is basically cellular 4G connectivity on a TP-Link modem. Um, I have my ISP line coming into it. I got about 20 seconds. Uh, 20 seconds when I configured dual failover testing and 30 seconds if I just had singular failover testing. The failover testing singular is it's just pinging an IP address. The dual testing is it's also pinging a root DNS server. So that's what we're trying to beat here. What I'm going to attempt to do for this test is firstly, I have my hotspot uh, running here from the phone or I thought I had. So I'm just gonna get that running and I'm going to open up Speedify and get those two uh, connections into it. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna pull over to screen two here and uh, let me get Speedify up somewhere. It's visible so you can see now it's only seeing my ethernet uh, connection as a source. So I'm gonna go and tap the button on my phone for USB tethering. <coughs> First I need to enable the hotspot, USB tethering. I'm just gonna have to do a manual disconnect reconnect because I've manually disconnected the USB. Okay, so we're back in action and now I need to just turn on USB tethering and now we should, now it's running. Network manager confirms that we are uh, connected or we're disconnected. Now I've connected to it, so now we can see there's two connection sources available to us in Speedify. First one is my ethernet, second one would be uh, the phone that's just come live, that's cellular. So that, that was sort of a roundabout way of verifying that it's the right connection. So that's definitely my phone hotspot there. Now I'm going to bond, let the bonding magic happen. Now the bonding magic is more complicated than it looks. It's going up to the cloud with my two connections, then coming back down as far as I understand and uh, bonding them together. Now, just of interest in terms of the speed, I was getting about sort of 40 uh, megabits uh, per second download on the baseline and about three or four on the upload, which is pretty typical for me. Uh, as I said, when I did a test here, I didn't really see a significant uh, difference when I added that cellular line to it. But what I'm going to do now is 
simulate a um, failing of the ethernet connection. The way I'm gonna do that, I don't wanna do anything on the software level to make Speedify's life any easier. It's what I'm gonna do instead is, I've just brought out my ethernet over a switch and the uh, second switch there, this one, that's running into my uh, computer. So what I'm just gonna do now in a second is pull out that ethernet, literally pull out the cabling, and that's gonna drop ethernet. And I'm just gonna watch now uh, to see how quickly it's going to uh, just, if there's gonna be any interruption whatsoever. I suspect there will not, but let's see. So I'm gonna go onto this website, ismyinternetworking.com, which is a nice little diagnostic utility. I wanna keep Speedify open too throughout this process so we can see uh, how quickly it recognizes the loss of ethernet connectivity. So three, two, one, and I'm gonna pull the cable. Three, two, one, cable's gone. So we've just lost ethernet. Uh, ethernet is still showing, although it's now showing that it's gone down to zero. Uh, uh, now it's dropped in Speedify, so that took about three seconds. And pretty good, pretty good. So that is the answer is truly zero, um, essentially. I mean, I don't think it took a couple of seconds for it to see that the ethernet uh, was gone, but the actual failover happened pretty much instantaneously. So uh, that is my quick test of uh, failover, how well that works on Speedify. What I will say, this failover on my hardware setup here, which is a little bit more complex, running an ISP line into a 4G TP link router with cellular configured as a backup option. And that process took me 20 to 30 seconds for that router in the other room to realize, oh, the ethernet has dropped. Let's start using cellular, bring that line up and turn onto it. Speedify beat that out of the park. So um, I'm still undecided about Speedify from a speed perspective. I haven't seen those gains, but that fade over testing was very encouraging. It pretty much went straight uh, from one to the other without any interruption. And uh, this is me browsing my cellular now. I can use the internet and it, you know, it was what, a five, one connection thereabouts. So it's not gonna be very quick, but on the plus side, it didn't take any time to get over to it. You know what, I may as, I may as, well, I may as well go all the way with this. So um, we can see what we're pulling here is limited. Now let me actually just reconnect ethernet to the switch. And let's see how long it takes for Speedify. There we go, that was about, what, a second? Now Speedify has got that. Our primary connection is in operation now. And uh, it's giving me a little notification here and we're back and uh, I can sort of just tell, well, I'll be able to tell by looking at the speed if this is ethernet or cellular. If it's anything above eight, it's, yeah, it's ethernet. So um, Speedify's failover testing has gone well. It's uh, outpaced my TP-Link uh, cellular router by about 20 to 30 seconds, which is good if you're looking for a quick cellular failover. If, you'd like to get, if you would like to get more videos from me about everything related to technology, home networking, and Linux, please feel free to hit that subscribe button.